finally some real fun with a solar panel system because Temgot sent me a lithium iron phosphate battery and today's the first day I ever got sodium ion batteries. But this battery makes me so excited. I'm currently running my computer system on it and I have the empty shell to my childhood favorite battery out here just for fun because boy, is this amazing. I had been looking for a year and a half for lithium iron phosphate batteries for a solar panel system. And I was almost going to ask EcoFlow if they wanted to send me one of theirs. But honestly, a lot of those big battery packs that are for like the uh, portable generators, I guess you could, call, you could call them, they kind of suck. All I want is a battery with a little bit of information and a good BMS. I didn't even know these existed. I thought I would have to buy lithium iron phosphate batteries like these and make my own battery pack. And so I never could uh, justify because I have little stacks of these Nissan Leaf cells, which lithium ion batteries, such as that Milwaukee battery over there, you know, they last at best maybe 1500 cycles, whereas the lithium iron phosphate instead of the lithium ion, they can last thousands of cycles. Their one issue is that if you, if you use them whenever they're freezing, they can irreparably damage themselves. Well, these ones have a heater in them. They self-heat. So whenever I do barrel boats, this is going to be perfect. I am so excited. And funny enough, it has an app. It actually has an app that does not require an account. It does not require an account. I can't believe it. And it gives quite a bit of information. So on the top, we have these caps that came with it. And I'm going to be doing a lot more videos, but I'm just, I'm so happy about this. We can see that we're pulling 9.1 amps. It's estimating six hours of runtime, which is pretty good. This, this battery is running my computer. I'm running Final Fantasy 14. I mean, I'm AFK, so it's, it's using only half power. I'm watching a video by Broken Taps about uh, SpaceX heat shield tiles. And I have, oh, the, the program for the VR headset just chilling in the background. No, no, I shut that off, Never mind. Now, I do run my computer at as low power as possible, even using MSI Afterburner to uh, underclock my graphics card. And I don't have much really plugged in except for my normal peripherals. I am just so happy because this is definitely a step up back from whenever I was playing with this Duralast battery. Back... 20 years ago. We've come a long way. This can either be the battery for our apartment or it can be the battery for the workshop, but it's definitely going to be the battery because it has some water tightness to run our barrel boat whenever I make one because I really want to make a barrel boat and ride it on the Schuylkill River out here. I also want to say that the manual is fairly well made and they also talk about how if the battery oh they have they have all the graphs if the battery yeah, how to activate the battery when the beam is cut off on the protection basically you just have to charge it like with this they word it in a very simplistic way where where you have to um you have to make sure you have a charger that can go zero to 12 volts and then don't don't put 15 volts into it don't put 10 volts into it but put 12.5 ish or something that's the average operating uh, voltage you know for you and me good viewer we both know that we could hook up pretty much anything and as long as you wake up the bms it should come back and that really appeals to me They've, they, they've made it in a way, and I, I, I will most likely end up falling prey to uh, messing up the BMS eventually. I'm really glad to hear that once I mess up the BMS, I'll be able to reset it.
I also like ha how it says how many cycles it's had. I figured we would really need to start using some of the uh, some of the power though. It came at 77% charge, which is a good amount. It's good for using. I've been running my computer for an hour now off of just that, and we're only down 9%. So I feel like maybe I can see how low I can get it tonight. And I can follow it with the app and get a good idea of how much power this gives. The temperature is rising a little bit, but not very much, just the tiniest amount. I'd like to see how this graph goes further. I believe it only saves maybe an hour or two. Yeah, two hours, but I don't know if that scales at all. Interesting, so I could actually kill my computer by pressing this button. This is really nice. Normally I don't like apps that go with things like this, but th because you don't need to have an account and it's just Bluetooth, I actually like this. This is really nice. You could have this inside your boat or inside your shed and just check it from here. I wish it would say how many watt hours has been put in, but oh well. I, I get it. They, they can't really probably estimate that much. I mean, if I had access to the code, I could, but it's not a huge issue. Man, today's the day First day I get a lithium ion phosphate battery, and the first day I get sodium ion batteries. I'm gonna save these for a separate video because these, when I first heard about these back in 2015, I told myself whenever these hit the market, I'm getting some. And I finally saw some on eBay, so I got them. These are the first batteries I've ever seen for sale. The first sodium ion batteries ever. It's 10.30, I have to be up at seven o'clock tomorrow, and I'm tired. This battery is outlasting me. I'm only taking 15% charge. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's look at the graph. It's interesting. You have to go over to uh, parameters first to have the history tab come up. But, oh well. You know, guys, it was actually pretty neat to just, at 5 in the morning, I couldn't remember what I left my battery at, so I just checked on my phone, and it showed me the current voltage of it and everything. So you could have this inside of a, a boat cabinet. You know, I keep thinking about boats, but you could have inside of a boat cabinet and still check it. So I connected the TV, um, light, and sound system onto this now. That should help pull some power out, which is actually good. It's actually pretty good to be able to, I mean, maybe we can even hook your computer up to it someday. We might be able to. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, suck the power out. Yeah. I'm hoping that your new computer actually can use a little bit less power. Yeah. But it is an AMD processor, so yeah, I, don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> I might actually start having a separate machine just for video. Because this machine uses like 40 watts to watch a video. But I could just have a, a tiny little single board computer running video on the TV. So I don't know if it's worth it to save power or not. But since I happen to have quite a few little computers, that could be a possibility. I got to get going to work. So we shut down everything except for the um, uh, phantom power and the, the light. And it's doing pretty well. Down twenty five percent. Wow.
watching a little bit of shows since I got home and it just turned over to 20% and we have red. I'm curious to see what will happen if we go to zero. Oh, so now it says recharge battery when it's under 10%. Yep. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's gone to zero. Straight from 9%. The computer is running off of the wall power. Now we're just running the TV, sound system, and light, and then any other phantom electricity being taken. The inverter cutoff voltage is, I believe, 10.5 volts, but this battery's cutoff voltage is 11 volts. So this will start complaining soon, start beeping, and it'll be really difficult to enjoy watching any videos when that happens, but we should be able to take this down to the voltage that this will disconnect. Wow, it just keeps going down. <laughs> oh, apparently, actually, it actually required to go down to go down to eight point eight volts. So that's actually pretty, pretty lenient. Interesting. So. That's the voltage alarm on the Windy Nation inverter. Apparently they still sell these. I can't believe it. I bought this years ago for I think Solar Sunday episode three. Yeah, this is a, one of the first things that I got for Solar Sunday. Okay, I think we'll end it there. Went down to a little bit underneath 11 volts. And we can take this and start recharging it. So I'm just starting the battery off with the small 1997 15 watt panel. I see it's putting in, well, the connection seems to be having issues. 0.6 of an amp. And the battery's gone back up to 11.75 volts. I like that it actually, hey guys, it actually says time till full. Oh, it does? It does, so it calculates that. The, um, the connections on the side though, they need to really be pressed down in order to get connection though. So I need to make a better connection. We're at the workshop and it's finally time to do something with these. Now, I've done stuff with it before. I'd have that battery pack. And that's what I had to, unfortunately, open to take the inverter out of. This would take quite a while to charge that. I have quite a few of these. It would be nice to get a few in parallel. So there we have it. One of the panels. They're BP. Not quite the right voltage or anything, so they won't be super efficient. But it should give at least like three or four amps. I have it charging, and it's a little hard to see, but we're getting 4.72 amps. The battery's actually over three volts, but the ba the individual cell icons keep disappearing but oh well 
Okay guys, I figured out a way that without extra wire, I can hook two panels onto here with only one connector that I have here. I do have a second connector, but I don't feel like, well, I would need a fourth connector. So how this works, I'm gonna stay in front of it and disconnect it. So right here, I cut the wires off of another one. And as soon as you get a system going with solar panels, you immediately want to improve it. Gosh. So here's the panel that I cut the wires off of. And I did that just so I could quickly hook this on there. And I did it at different lengths too, I think. Wait, what happened to this piece of... Well, gosh, I don't know. All right. Oh, I know, They're, they just happen to be different lengths. Okay, okay. Because normally I do that on purpose. And normally they're the same length, so I thought I had to cut some away. But yeah, these are actually how I usually do it. Well, instead of just having it straight connect up to the other connectors, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part and I'm going to feed each one into here. So this will now be the primary one, and it'll have expansion leads to be in parallel. Oh, hey, you know what I just realized? While I'm faffing about with this, I forgot this is right here, and I already have a connector on it. I do like that I've already started moving over to these again. Gosh. This door is real tough to open. Wow, so that little 30 watt panel is actually giving 21 watts, sometimes 22 watts. Cleaning the, cleaning the panel gave an extra watt of power and 57 hours <laughs> until, yeah. It's funny, I laugh whenever people say it's a, it's a bug that you catch. I laugh because I forget I've been living with it for a long time, but you just, you always wanna have those things working. Having a solar panel in the shade is just agony. I like how I have a nice selection of plumbing supplies right now. This is from the 50s or 40s if I remember right. There we go. So now this will be the primary one and these will be addition leads and never connect these together unless you're in the shade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's already at 2%. We have 1.85 amp hours. I say we should get that up quite a bit more. 5.21 amps, okay, 65 watts of power. Now I should be able to check the difference between these two panels before I connect them up, just to make sure I didn't mess something up. And The difference should be, if it's 80 volts, there's a problem. If it's 20 volts, we're good. Okay, it's, it's 30 volts. Nine point one eight amps, Woo. and that's even without MPPT. Eight 
And just FYI, the battery's behind the panel because the cable's really short. It's now 11.09 a.m. and we're still at 2%, but it's gonna be climbing pretty fast. And this can be pretty representative of whatever system I put on this building. I have, oh, I think I have four panels in total, which is a really good amount. I'm running these at worst PowerPoint tracking at 12 volts. They're what, 24 or 30 something volt panels. So these would be best fitting with a 24 volt system or, or something like that. Oh, that's neat. You can see that I first went up to about five amps and went down, went up to the 30 watt panel. And now we had a little bit or had a little bit of that. And then it doubled when I connected up the, the other panel because there was a delay. That is so cool. Temperature is still dropping. I wonder if we'll see that. Yeah, we kind of saw that kind of steady. So it drops quicker when it's not being charged. Ooh, up to 5% and... Okay, so it displays the same on this machine. Um, I wonder how the history will do. Oh, so maybe it's only whenever the apps open. Oh, interesting. So the, the app needs to be on. It actually separated it. Oh, okay. This is keeping it in the app. Okay. So it looks like everything is saved in the app. So it's done app side. So all these graphs don't transfer over to your other machine. Now it is 30 degrees out here. So I'm wondering... I mean, I don't think it's going to get there. It's probably only going to peter out to maybe 15 degrees Celsius by the time I get out here because um, it has really good insulation and it, it's really warm. It's been about, oh, two hours, I think. And we're up to 35% charge. Ooh, look at that. 94 watts. I'm gonna reset again because my phone hadn't been on. So I might want to dedicate an older phone to always be with this. Let's see if this, moving this panel down, has helped at all. Oh, it has, yeah. It's the next day and we have a bit of an overcast day, but only a little bit of fog. I hope to still get maybe 40 watts of power today. When I put everything away last night, I probably shouldn't have put the battery in the ground, but thankfully it's heated in here. So the ground is just like 55 degrees. That's, that's more than warm enough. But yeah, next time I'll put it on the table. All right, so let's get these things outside now. I like how they fit there now. That's really cool. And we left off with 41% charge. Let's see where it is now. 42, sorry, 42. Right, I should have remembered it because that's the secret of the universe, the meaning of the universe. I just realized it came with foam. Don't throw that away because it can make a perfect little base. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, we're actually getting 25 watts. That's pretty good. That's better than the 40 watts. That I mean, we'll probably get 50 watts. Yeah, that's, 50 watts is better than the 40 watts I had hoped for. Let's connect up the other one. 
At this point in the video, I run into an issue that it takes me a little while to figure out why I'm having an issue. It's because this battery is not rated to connect directly to a solar panel. It's only connected, it's only rated to connect through an MPPT charge controller or a PWM charge controller. And so whenever I'm connecting these panels, sometimes the voltage spikes in a way that it freaks out. And it's good that I don't continue this anyway because if I were to let this battery get to 100%, it would shut off the connection to the battery. These panels would go up to 40, 43 volts and it would most likely kill my new battery. So everything you're about to see now, learn that this is what happens if you don't use a charge controller. And then later on, I'll switch to using the charge controller. Well, that's interesting. So due to how these connectors connect up, I, I the one cable is way longer than the other. And in this case, it actually worked out badly because this cable got hidden and that one was looped around and came from under here. So I inadvertently connected that panel to itself, shorting it out. It's still producing power, but now all of a sudden it's going in and out of taking 50 watts. Okay, so they're both connected up now, and it continues going back and forth between standby, charging, discharging. These are some very strange panels. I have never seen a panel that has an issue whenever it's... I don't know what's going... Is there a relay inside the panel box? I couldn't get it open. I checked the polarity of the panels, and they're both the same, and they're running in parallel, so... Hmm. With one of the panels down, well, the offending panel, really, now it's just charging. So did that somehow reverse the flow? Oh, well, at the end of the day, I only paid $40 for this panel, and I actually think I got $35, because I haggled quite a bit. You can tell these panels were just compliance panels, not meant to be actually good designs but they just wanted to hmm. they just wanted to have something so they could offset their petroleum products looks like it's just a connection well I think what I'll do is I'll I'll put this inside and grab another panel and then we can have A-B testing, I guess. Wow, yeah, it's something to do with that panel. It shifted all of a sudden because this one, uh, the panel number three, and I have one more, so I have four in total. Panel number two, actually, no, wait, no, this is panel number two. That was the original panel. I swapped, swapped the connectors over to this. We're having 52 watts, 54 watts. It's not too bad. It appears the other one has had some issues, but before we end, I have the last three of my Anderson connectors. And if this, and if this video gets like $10 from ads, which Nowadays, now that I have more new viewers, they are saving to get that much money. I'll buy some more Anderson connectors or I'll buy some more cables. But that way, these videos just from the ad revenue will pay for me to eventually put these panels on this roof.
हाँ So it's been maybe a half hour and it's still charging. I've discovered that in the manual, it never says to connect it to a solar panel. It says connect it to a solar panel charge controller. So I believe the issue is just that that spike in voltage, because these panels are pretty big, they can provide enough of a spike before this pulls it down. That spike in voltage when I connect the panels is enough to set the BMS off. And I shouldn't continue doing this without it being protected because if this battery reaches 100%, it'll disconnect its charge plugs and the panel side will go up to 44 volts again and it could fry this BMS. So I'm going to install my trusty eco-worthy MPPT charge controller, which is actually a real legit MPPT charge controller. And check this out. I've had this thing since like episode three yeah, I've had this thing since episode three of this series. And I I never took this off because it was so well crimped around it. I thought I already did that. That's amazing. It's like brand new, ready for another eight years of service. So for a while, EcoWorthy didn't have any smaller MPPT charge controllers on their website or any of their shops. So I felt like maybe I would never be able to get one of these again. And so I got really cautious of using it because it's so hard to find a small MPT, MPPT charge controller. But now, over the past year, I realized they started selling these again. Not this exact one. They have a smaller one that's more efficient. I think it has Bluetooth capability as well. So that makes me feel a lot better. I don't have to worry so much about blowing this up. I don't want to blow this up. And to be honest, I guess at this point, if it's lasted eight years with me, it's pretty much the durability of a 1920s tool. So um, I probably don't have to worry that much. But still, I'm going to be careful with it. The fact that this, this can last eight years with me, holy cow, that is a good, that is a good review. And thus it's time to pilfer the last of the Anderson connectors from the lithium pack. This will end up being reconfigured into a 24 volt pack that we'll use in a UPS. So I won't need Anderson connectors for it, but I'll need one big Anderson connector, which I believe is a 150 amp variant. I forgot to account for the height of this, so I might want to reconfigure this so this is a little bit higher, but I forget how to make this work with this. Thankfully, I can just turn it off and turn it back on. Oh, there we go. I guess I just didn't press enough. I think my menu button is just going bad. There we go. Okay, looks like I can handle it. I don't plan to use it with this, but let me re-say that. I plan for this to stay with this because I like this little, little thing so much and this will be for the apartment, but I don't plan to be charging it with 24 volt panels. I plan to just be using the other ones. Oh, discharging, what? Okay, so something to do with this BMS.
Now it says it's charging. Five amps, nice. So, hmm. I think maybe it, whenever it goes into the float, it actually counts it as a um, discharge. So the issue is that I had the voltage set too low and this is working better now. It would skip some bits in the menu. That's what was confusing me. We're getting eight amps now. Look at that. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. This is far more efficient. I hope this isn't getting too hot. But, um, but yeah, this is amazing. Eight amps. I now have it set to charge to 14.5 volts and then float at 14.2 volts, which I believe that should be, that should be pretty good. I love how this is the only MPPT charge control I've ever had. So this is the culmination of all power I've ever made on Solar Sunday. Except for the one kilowatt hour that I made with the non-controlled system. But yeah, we're, we're at 51 kilowatt hours for Solar Sunday. I've never had much of a permanent solar system. So it'd be nice to have, it'd be nice to have one that's permanent. And that number would definitely go up then. Fifty-six watts, not too bad. Not too bad for an overcast day. I'm busy with work, but passing by here again, I see that it's finally gone down to zero. Just five minutes ago, it was down to 12 watts, and then it was 25 watts before that, but it's definitely dark, too dark for this. Well guys, it's day three and we are starting with 54% and we have a little bit of sun. So let's get these panels set out. And I'm thinking this will probably be the last day that I have these panels just laying about. I might finally set it onto one of the buildings. But you know, for now, this is a really good test. We have this system going really well. The battery's hidden back there, and I'm not going to wait for this sun to move over here. I'm going to go home and have some hot chocolate or some coffee, whatever Thais made me. Okay, it's been like, oh, three, four hours, something like that. Twenty-eight watts, really? Oh, it's, it's float charging, okay. So I guess this, well, let's pull out the battery thing. Oh wow, 100%. Holy hell. Whew. Okay, that did it fast. Well, time to put this stuff back, because we are done. Done, done, done. The panels are in, and I even hit one against the dumpster really hard, and it didn't break it. I was kind of amazed. I'm actually really amazed. Now, as for the power. Okay. The, the power that this takes is not enough to make this think it's discharging. So 
That speaks very well of the efficiency of this, that it can still detect itself as being on standby mode. I'm very happy with this. So we got our fully charged battery home and I just realized it can technically do this. I would not recommend it though because these are not copper alligator clips, but I thought that was horribly scary looking. I thought about grabbing cables to make another connector for that, but I don't quite have wires that are thick enough for this. And truth be told, I don't feel like soldering something right now because I've already worked a whole day. Ooh, so nice. Yeah, let's get this transferred over. This is the computer. I'm gonna move this over so I don't accidentally move it because if I put these all the way in, the plugs no longer really work that well. Man, I had no idea recompressing video files took so much power. Shot up to 265 watts. Video editing sure takes a lot of power. Thankfully it gets done pretty fast. And they were back down. While I was editing, it was up to about 12 to 15 amps. Now, what happens when I render? Now that I'm pulling 250 watts, these cables are definitely not adequate. They are hot and this, these alligator clips are very warm. So that is a good place for me to end it with powering the rendering. Once this is done, I'm going to switch my computer off and it'll just be powering the TV. I think that'll be a, a better load for this. And I plan to remove these leads because all I had was some extension cord wire and I'd like to get some thicker wire for this. I'm not even sure if this is even copper, truth be told. Well, with that now over to grid power, we're only pulling 35 watts, about 40 watts from this. I think what we should do, is we, we should go to control and flip the discharge switch. What happens? Wow. Let's see what happens when I turn it on. Ooh, that's that's dangerous. You can just hey, hey thighs, you can just turn that on with the, the app. Oh. I was wondering what happened. <laughs> oh, that's wow. that's a little bit dangerous because I could have touched that at any time and ended level one text or yeah. not ended that they'd still be making the videos, but our our viewing of it, you know. Spent some time just sat around, took a shower, was offline for a bit, but we had the light on and whatever else is plugged in, turned off the uh, speakers and turned off the TV. Only pulls about 20 watts, giving 32 hours, 12 minutes of life. That's pretty good. And I believe that's just the light. So at the very least, we can get a lot of a lot of hours out of just the lighting in the room. And so I want to, you know, this battery pack would be too small for a big panel system like what I could make at the workshop. 
But this would be perfect for our apartment because I have a 30 watt panel, I have a 15 watt panel, that's 45 watts. That could be maybe 250 watt hours a day on a good day. And that could fill this maybe a quarter if we're lucky. And if we could run things like lights or something like that, or even just the entertainment system, well, that's pretty good. So yeah, that's my review so far. Well, the first impressions of the Temgot LifePo 4 100 amp hour battery. I really like it. I'm glad I didn't buy a, an EcoFlow uh, River, I think it was. I'm glad I did not get one of those because even though you have to have a charge controller for this, it just works better. It's the next day. It's Saturday. It's the day for editing for the Solar Sunday. because We've had almost a full week to tinker around with this. Sixty nine percent. I've connected my computer into it. Can I edit this video with this amount of power? I don't know. I really don't know because this is a long, long video. So we have so far 14 gigabytes of video to compress down in order to put it into Adobe Premiere CS6 because Adobe Premiere is so old, at least the version that I that I own outright is so old that I it can't understand the .mov files. So this is going to take a lot more power. Yeah. I'm even going to turn this off just to not burn out these connectors because, nope, they're already above ambient, that's for sure. Fourteen gigabytes becomes eight gigabytes, and we lost five percent. Now to open up Adobe Premiere. And get these, um, oh, whatever the term is for them, whenever you rasterize or whatever. Not so bad. I could definitely see myself editing videos on a Mac Mini or something similar in the future. Conforming. That's the word. Conforming. I couldn't remember. Well, that's not so bad. Took me about an hour, actually an hour and a half, oh no, two hours actually. It took me about two hours to get through that, an hour and a half of footage. And we're down to 42%. I now have the computer. I took a break. I put the computer back into the wall power. Now we're just running this. I, if I had better connections, if it wasn't just alligator clips, I would use this. But it's also kind of hard to because I can't include the video of me rendering it in the video of it. So I might as well not even worry. Whenever it renders, this is a long video. This might take 30 minutes to render. 30 minutes of pulling 260 watts. That's really going to pull a lot of heat. And I don't feel like doing that just yet. My system isn't up, up to snuff for that. So yeah. 
that's pretty much it. I'm really happy with this battery. And it seems like a, a good option. It actually seems like a good option. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope Tim got sends me more of these. Thank you very much for watching. See ya. Now to edit these clips too.